is Brad in the Barn Studio here in Upcountry, South Carolina. Thank you for joining me today. It's a beautiful day. I've got both barn doors open here, and it's going to be a big day of construction here. I'm heading on down to one of the lumber yards over in Six Mile, South Carolina. Oh, it's a big town. It's got a lot of big things going on here. No, it's a nice little country town and wonderful people. I'm going over to get some more lumber. We're going to be taking behind me, putting up some new walls. We need to add a couple of more walls to close in things a little bit better here. And so we're working on that. And so I'm looking forward to that, getting a chance to be able to get out and then fix some things up. Got to take care of the yard, you know, as the weather's turning here. And it's a, it's a very, very nice time here. And I hope it's nice where you are as well. My name's Brad Zockel. This is the Heaven Tour Ministry. We have been uh, traveling and uh, on live streaming and other social media. I'm going to say it's about two and a half years now. I've kind of lost track of time. About during the COVID time is when the idea of a ministry to talk about heaven came into fruition. And since then, we've reorganized and grown. And I want to thank you so much for making this possible. I appreciate y'all. There's Miss Teresa. I appreciate you being here. And to my other friends that are coming on board, we're going to have a good time. Revelation 21 and verse 2 today. There's a beautiful, uh, just a, a wonderful, good greeting here. Good morning, everyone, and welcome in. Isn't that wonderful? Our uh, moderator, faithful moderator, Miss Ther- uh, Miss Lisa, is also here. Mark and Deb, you're also here. It's good to see you back once again. And let me see. We've got Laura here. Thank you for the blessing. And then Mr. Franklin. I want to tell you something. Mr. Franklin from Arizona. Uh, I, this He sent me this. Isn't this something else? And I've worn this on different posts here, too. The Federal Heights Fire. Uh, this is of his son. It has Mr. Franklin's last name on it as well. I wanted to show you that. And I will wear this a couple times today as I'm posting some different videos of Franklin. He's from Arizona, and this is a very treasured hat that he sent me along. I've got, you might see them in the back. I collect these hats and I'll wear them and I'll kind of uh, um, take them and wear them at different times and everything. And boy, I really, really enjoy that too. And I want to show you this as well. Uh, this is something, I'm sending this over to a pastor who's been very kind uh, to us. And uh, this is Miss Christy and Mr. Steve. They're making t-shirts. Uh, and I really, really love these t-shirts, the Heaven Tour t-shirts, which are being made available. And I have some that I'm giving as gifts and such. And it's just really, really something else. And somebody said, well, where do you get them? I don't believe that you have a reverse mirror image here. And if I do, you let me know. But that is at sassafras teas. If you'd like to get them, a percentage of those, they're handling the shipping, they're handling all of the different things there. If you go down to the bottom of the page under contact us at sassafras teas or call them and say, look, I'd like to get a shirt. I don't think they have the shirts actually posted on their site. But boy, you're more than welcome to order one. And then a percentage of that helps me in my travels. As you know, this coming, uh, Two weeks from now, okay, not this weekend, but two weeks from now, I'll be flying out to Grand Junction, Colorado. Our ministry is paying the way for that trip. There's a bit of expense. And so things like whenever you purchase a mug or you're taking care of purchasing a T-shirt and things like that, those percentages help me on these flights and places that could not be able to afford them. So thank you so much. Hey, this last weekend, Newbury, South Carolina, I had a great time. The The Front Yard Heaven is Home Conference. The Gibson family had invited friends, family, relatives over, circled up in their front yard and had a good study. And may I say this, Miss Denise, who is on here, traveled up from Florida, up to South Carolina to be with us during that study. That was really something else. Good morning to you, Bear. Let's go over here. And it's good to see Truth Seekers back. It is good to see you. And I thank you for your prayers very much. And let me see here. And there's Mr. Daniel faithful traveler here and hardworking young man too. Let's see, Brenda, good morning to you as well. PM, good to have you back. I'm glad to see you there. And then there's Tony from Texas. Good to have you. Gamaliel, hello to you as well. And bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, Blessed, I appreciate your encouragement there. And good to see you also as well, Tricia. Miss Evelyn is here and she's giving us a wave and I'll wave back to you. Blind is also here. Morning to you, my friend. God bless you, Pamela. Thank you for that. And I appreciate you from old uh, birthplace from Pittsburgh. Good to see you. Susan is checking in from Canada. 
Good to have you here, my friend. Susan, good to have you. Estella and Jan, thank you so much. And Jan, it will be an honor to see you in Mercer. May, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, my, my wife reminded me uh, on there. And uh, it's a wonderful church, Grace Harvest Church in Mercer. Thank you so much. And there's Mr. Dan, good to see you. Wonderful to have you here. And there's Mr. Franklin and Laura. Uh, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Let me go down and make sure I didn't miss anybody. What we'll do is at the top of the hour after the study, we'll get right into the questions. If you have a question, you can enter it in here and I'll take them in the order that they've been coming in here too. So good to see you here. Oh, there we go. Let me see. Okay, so Oil is also asking continued prayer as the diagnosis that he shared with us earlier in the week. Second round of therapy is on Friday and oil. We will remember that as well. Thank you so much for letting me know on that and on Friday. Absolutely too. Uh, Miss Christina, thank you also for helping out as a moderator. That really is very, very kind. Here's Kelly. Thank you so much for the encouragement. We're going to get into Revelation 21 and verse 2, Kelly, today. Talk some more about the future promises from the Lord. Thank you so much for being here. And we also, how old? There is it. We're Paradise, Texas. Uh, Bob and Annette have their Heaven Tour mugs. Oh, boy, you can't go wrong with that. Brent makes some great mugs, doesn't he? And we have Nana's and Sherry, Curtis as well, Marie, thank you so much. We've got Gamaliel here. When am I visiting Rhode Island? Gamaliel, let me tell you something. If we had a group, yourself, this is kind of a hint, you get a group of 10 believers that will set up a place for me to meet, then let's talk. I've got some open time this summer, okay? I will get in the car and go up there. It's my rule is this, I will only go where I'm invited, okay? So if, if the invitation means, it's kind of like uh, June 2nd, okay? And I know Miss Lisa's on here right now, uh, the Christenberry family. And she says, come on over to Maryville, Tennessee. She goes, we've got a place for you. Come on over here, have the whole day at our wedding venue. And that's what I did. They set it up, they've got people coming. I'm on my way, it's set for June 2nd. I would absolutely love, I can't tell you the last time I've been in Rhode Island, it's been years, I would love to come back up there, be with you. If you can set it up, give me, uh, in, in, uh, let me see, the contact would be, through email would be the easiest, would be at brad at theheaventour.com, brad at theheaventour.com. I'd love it, I'd love it, absolutely, sir. Okay, Bear, yours is, yours is gonna be the first question we'll deal with at the top of the hour. Cindy, good morning to you. And let's see, Stevie, let's see. Wonderful, Stevie is here, ready to roll. Diana as well, oh, wonderful. Let me see, okay, well, I think we've got everybody here to get rolling here. So let me go through some announcements and let's get ourselves going here. Gonna have a big talk here when we talk about heaven and specifically Revelation chapter 21 and verse two. Boy, I'm glad to see you all here. Welcome to the barn. Today's a big construction day for me. Well, in the sense of preparation. I'm taking everything after we have our meetings here. I'm heading on down to Six Miles, South Carolina, to the lumber yard. We've gotta get some walls up over here, possibly one right there behind me that you see right near the WD-40 can. Uh, we're going to put some up and start closing this area off a little bit more and a little bit more and so that I might have some more uh, specific areas for the recording studio here. So I'm going to be on my way down there. So I'm kind of looking forward to this. People have spring cleaning and I have construction day. And so uh, looking forward to that. I want to thank you for your encouragement and your help. Um, we have gone through uh, the financial challenges that every ministry has done, but you know something? I always just, the Lord comes through every time. And some people have asked, you know, what's the update on the um, new vehicle? As you know, we've cleared 250,000 on the Honda CRV, and my dear mechanic friends uh, down in Greenville, South Carolina, have taken care of it, pushing us on through and everything. And, and we're making it here. Right now, the, uh, the, we need 12,500 for me to get a lower mileage car. I do wanna remind you once again, it's not a new car. It's just another car that has lower mileage, everything. We have now reached, uh, we need 12,500. We are at 10,453. 10,453, which means we're at 83% of our goal. 
Thank you so very much. That's very, very kind of you, man. I'm just absolutely humbled by this. A little church just up here in Walhalla said, we've all got together, we're sending you $1,000. And boy, I can't tell you how much that has helped out. That is such a great thing. I just uh, appreciate all of your encouragement. And uh, as we're going through and pacing, pasting, uh, pacing ourselves in our ministry, and I wanna make sure as I go into the summer and in the fall, that I'm not overdoing it, but also uh, going where I'm needed. That's what I absolutely love doing, is going where the call, where people are saying, we want you here. And so uh, we do that and we just pray about it. And as the Lord makes the way, then I show up. And so if you have a place where you're saying that, listen, we have people that really want to hear you, let me know. Brad at theheaventour.com. If you'd like to know our travel map, go to our website, which is theheaventour.com, and take a look at where I'm traveling here as well, okay? I did a podcast this morning, and it is downloaded. Miss Andrea and the editing team should have it ready by tomorrow morning, and that is Questions About Heaven. It is on Revelation 21. I'm doing the Revelation edition, verse by verse. A number of you have written me and said, I'm going through Revelation 1, 1, 2, listening to it as I'm traveling to work and, or, or you know, truck driving and things like that. Absolutely, go, go. That's great wonderful to, to do that. And then let me know if you have some questions and I'll put them on future podcasts. The title of the podcast is Questions About Heaven. Questions About Heaven. And that is on virtually any platform, Spotify, Pandora, you name it, it's on there. Okay. All right. So here's what we have today. We're going to get going. And so I'm going to ask everybody, unless you have a question, make sure that the conversations don't distract from people that are coming on here and that are wanting to know about heaven, specifically about this. So let's get into it right now. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 2. Let me read, first of all, the passages. I'm reading, I'm using, as our website is blueletterbible.org, which is fantastic. It has a number of translations and Bible studies and studies in the original languages and such. It's like getting a library in your house for free, all right? Now, in here, we start in Revelation 21.1, and as you know, I rotate the translations and read them. Yesterday was King James Version. Today is a new King James Version, and I see this. I'll go back to verse one to take us into this. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, and there was no more sea. Verse 2, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, I like to tell people this. When we go into the scriptures, we have 66 books, and that breaks down to 1,189 chapters. Really, the believer can agree with this. It's almost as if the 1,187 chapters prior to the final two are like an introduction of what's going to happen. This is the eternal state, Revelation 21 and 22. Where will believers in Christ be forever? Boom. You get this. And I'll tell you how fantastic this is. You see the opulence, the glory, the fellowship, the love, the excitement, all of these promises, and this is only a description of the capital city. So you can imagine, this is just a sampling of the glory that's going to be there. And indeed, the, the gates are open for the traversing about the new earth. I mean, the mind staggers on this. I want to remind you, God could have called this new existence for the believer anything, but he wanted a continuity that wouldn't intimidate. And this is a great blessing to me when I first started studying this. When we take a look at heaven and people have this ethereal cartoon Warner Brothers idea that it's nothing but clouds people are sitting on and calling, and this is ridiculous as to be biblically illiterate. This is a very, very powerful illustration of what's going on. The continuity, we see things on earth, they'll be in heaven, but perfect. We see waterways on earth in heaven, perfect. We see trees as well as trees. Families as well as families, feasting, feasting, and all of this. But notice that we keep seeing the word new, which is the word kainos, K-A-I-N-O-S is the transliteration into English, which means unprecedented. 
So the meals you'll have in heaven are unprecedented. You've never had anything like it before. The friendships and the joy. Oh, last night, my wife and I, we met with another Christian couple down in Greenville. What a precious time. We only intended to be with them for 45 minutes. It ended up over two hours with just the kindred spirit. And it's just the joy of knowing we'll have people. And some people, some of my friends here are very lonely very, very lonely and, uh, you know, and they're saying, if I could just have friends, you'll have more friends in your first heavenly minute than you have in your entire, uh, your, in your first heavenly minute than you have in your entire earthly life. There's a continuity though that I want to establish that things up there, like I have no idea what I'm looking at here. These things are totally alien. We don't see that. We don't see that. The references here of things that we have known but they've just been put into a perfected state here. When you continue through the scriptures, you'll see this, and I'm looking over here. You know, when I think about this, Job, Job is, listen, uh, age-wise, manuscript age, is the first book of the Bible as far as the, the age of the manuscript itself. And he says this in Job chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. I know my Redeemer lives. I'm talking, I know the Messiah lives. And when this flesh has failed, when worms destroy this body, in my flesh... I will see God with my own eyes and that not of another. Job knows in the spirit of prophecy of the personal resurrection and identification of the believer to seeing the Lord. This is there. I will, and I will still have a body, continuity. I will still be recognizable. Think about it, Matthew chapter eight and verse 11, that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob recognize. Okay, continuity comes over here. When we take a look at this and same with the new Jerusalem. God could have called it anything, but he elected to call it Jerusalem that we might see in continuity. This is the beloved city. Oh, in times past, it's had its troubles. As a matter of fact, I was reading it this morning here through various sources. Do you know historically Jerusalem has been captured over 40 times? It's been besieged 23 times, I think I remember, okay? But oh, no one's going to attack and overcome this place, all right? This is one, the new Jerusalem, that's now known as the Holy City. Let's talk about that in a little bit. Boy, I do love this study here. This is a specific city, which is not just an ethereal concept. Give you an idea, verse 16 and 17 of Revelation 21, this new Jerusalem coming out of heaven, it is actually measured. In human terms, you can take this in a measurement. It's a showing, it's a tangible, realistic place. It's 12,000 stadia, which is what one translation will say. That equates to about 1,500 miles in every direction. It's a massive city, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles that way. It give you an idea. It's like uh, Miami to New York in just one side of the city. It is very, very massive there. Verse 17, the walls, they're the symbolic walls of protection in God's home are 72 yards wide alone. So you can imagine this. We see this is coming down. It has been prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And when we think about this, we're looking at this city that whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that God has made it. So if you're saying the architect, the builder, the creator, the designer is Yahweh himself, it staggers my imagination as to what this is going to look like. I mean, I've seen some beautiful places and have been absolutely overcome with the exactness of, of, of particular places and visiting the beauty of them. But I've never seen anything when you say it's absolutely perfect. It's absolutely, there's no flaw whatsoever. We will, believers are given that promise that God says, oh, I've got something here. Do you wanna know what completeness is, perfectness is? You wait. Even the present heaven, it's as if God says, you know something, I could do better than that. There is, you know, I, I have a better presentation. But, and that's available for you too. If you are a believer, a follower of the Lord, these are the promises here that are, have been given to you. Look at Joel chapter three and verse 17 in reference to Revelation 21 too. And it tells us Jerusalem right now, Jerusalem is not, you know, by any means, there's still problems. There's still, uh, uh, there's strife, there are uh, uh, divisions, political factions and everything, but Joel 3.17, Jerusalem will be holy and strangers will not traverse it anymore, which means the non-believers will have no authority nor a presence there. We will be completely with those that are Yahweh followers, Jesus lovers, 
fellowship, friends of the faith, uh, there together. Relatives that we've known here biologically as well as friends we've known socially in our life and then others we've never met before. It's just like last night. I've never met this couple. Uh, my wife and I never met this couple and the bonding was almost instantaneous. We've never met them before. And yet through a mutual acquaintance, we were able to get together and have, and this is the way it is. And I told you about this being over in, uh, what was it, in Alabama. I'm walking through a Bucky's and a girl calls out about a 22 year old young lady. And she says, are you that man that goes on TikTok and YouTube and talks about heaven? I, I was absolutely stunned. I said, uh, yes, ma'am. She goes, well, I've watched, you're Brad, right? And I just remember this, you know, I was telling my wife driving home, I was calling her back home. And I said, this is just like heaven. You know, when we're gonna be in heaven and people are gonna call out your name, indeed, you're keeping your name, Matthew chapter eight and verse 11 gives us that principle. And you're gonna turn around to these people, hey, you know, we haven't seen you since and everything. And you're gonna see friends that you hadn't seen in years and other ones calling your name. What a joyful thing. I think one of the things that I enjoy so much in the scriptures is the, re, the, the, the fellowship. some people say, oh, I can't wait to taste the food, and, and, and indeed, and, and I can't wait to hear the music. And I think one of the things is fellowshipping with the Lord. When I went to Christian college and we all sat together, you know, 7,000 strong, singing praises to the Lord, praying en masse corporately, and those different things, and it just absolutely swept me off my feet. I just absolutely love this and seeing this, and that will be brought again one. Once again, I just really appreciate that. Revelation 21 and verse two, and then it tells us this in Hebrews chapter three and verse 14. This is what the believers are seeking. They are looking for that new city. They're not looking for a final destination of being put into the ground in a suspended animation. They are not put there to rot and having no existence. That's old. That's the old way. That's the old thinking that there is no hope after this life. You know, I think of uh, Odysseus uh, going down when you read the Odyssey and he goes down into the underworld of the Greek mythology to look around to complete his journey. And it's musty and the Hades of the description is musty and dark and dank and there's no hope. And he bumps into, in the darkness, he bumps into Alexander the Great and Alexander the Great says, I'd give up all my battles to be a stable boy for just one year to get out of here. What a horrifying uh, thought here. And that was what they thought was the afterlife. Well, that's the old stuff. That's the old stuff. We see here, all things are kinos, all made new, unprecedented. That's what it's telling us here. But that continent, that, that continuity, okay, that continuity that we see also lets us know, you have a pattern here that continues on in a perfected state in heaven. It's been prepared by God. Now, there are two brides that are brought up in Revelation. The bride that prepares herself is in Revelation 19 and verse 9. That represents the believers of all times who have made themselves as followers. It's as if a bride was preparing herself for the wedding. Here is as if the bride has been prepared. It says it has been, she has done nothing because this is inanimate. This is a city. But all the ornamentation we'll talk about later on, on what this is like. The beauty of this is just a wonderful promise here. She has been made ready here, uh, on here. I just, as I see these different promises, these are things that we see that not only do we know who we'll be with, we're even allowed to say, what will it be like as we walk around, as we enjoy, as we celebrate? And this is just one city, it's the capital city, but it tells us this in its enjoyment. This design has been from God himself as well. I like this. When we take a look at these wonderful promises we see in the scripture, let me take a look at the time here. Oh, I'm doing okay. All right. And when I see this, I like this when we keep talking about the superlatives of the new Jerusalem, uh, Revelation 21 verse 27, nothing in that existence will defile, nothing. There's no sewer systems, uh, there's no garbage, there are uh, 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 no uh, noise ordinances, parking problems, nothing that defiles. However, how detailed you wanna get, always follow the principles of the afterlife promises of the believer. Psalm 1611, we will have in his presence fullness of joy. Psalm 17 verse 15, we will be completely satisfied when we see his likeness. Uh, Isaiah 55, I think it's verse 11, says happiness will endure forever. 
Uh, we will never thirst. We will never hunger. Uh, we see that we will be in God's home. I mean, think of these principles that we see here on these things. And we have so much that is being uh, promised to us here. Great comfort. All right, let me go to the questions. I'm going to go on back here. And uh, let's go through and spend our last 35 minutes in going. So what I'm going to do, if you have a question, go ahead and put it down, but just chill. Don't get, you know, I'm working my way down through the scrolling, okay? I don't know if you can see it on my side. I doubt you can. But people are wondering, we've had in the past, somebody goes, how come he didn't answer my question? I haven't got to it yet. I'm going back to the beginning of the time of the uh, the, the hour and answering through. So just put it down once, I, it will scroll by, okay? All right, let's go through here and let's start off here. If you've just joined us, we talk about heaven here and we uh, stay on that subject. We're in Revelation chapter 21 and verse two on the new Jerusalem, which is the capital city of the new earth. Thank you so much for joining us and I appreciate our friends here. If you're not a believer, that doesn't disqualify you. This is an open forum. If you have questions, we just ask for, we respect each other. We respect you, and uh, we pray that you would just uh, bring your questions to us that we might be able to uh, answer them and uh, get some biblical answers here, all right? Okay, I'm still scrolling down, and here we go. We'll start with the first question, uh, Bear asks, in heaven will God be solid as Jesus was flesh on earth? Will I be able to embrace him? You're going to find God in the form of Jesus Christ. Jesus is tangible, God is a spirit, John chapter 14, it, and it tells us that. So no, as we see this, but we have something intriguing here, which uh, gives you an idea. So we're gonna be satisfied. We will obviously be satisfied. We see his likeness. We see that in uh, Psalm 17, 15. So it, it, it very well could be as we see this, that we're seeing, as we see Jesus, we are looking at God face to face, as it says in Revelation 22, four. So when you are seeing God, quote unquote, solid, as you say. It could be that you're seeing Jesus as God and you are uh, being uh, content with seeing that triune God in the form of Jesus Christ, all right? Let me see here. Oh yeah, blind, the uh, the t-shirts the are wonderful. And then I, I did give the uh, place where you can order them. And then I'll see if I can't put that on our website as well. All right. Moving on down. Let's see. Tony. Pastor, okay. Okay. Uh, Brother Tony, you'll have to tell your Texas pastor that my calendar is filling up very quickly. And I would highly recommend uh, that he gets a hold of me this week, okay? and to my other friends that are talking because it is filling up. I've had another uh, uh, engagement in uh, back in Alabama as well, and I'm talking, oh yeah, here we go. One of our cats just came by here, wanting some attention. She knows it's almost time for me to finish, and so she's standing here and hitting. It's, it's amazing how God puts a time clock into them. They will know when it's about 10.30, and they're standing over at the barn door like, okay, are you ready? That's yeah, hilarious too. So I would, Tony, just give him a gentle nudge, but I am filling up a very, very quickly here. Okay. Um, Elizabeth had a dream about someone telling me to look up Revelation 12. What would that mean? Elizabeth, I don't talk about dreams or NDEs on here. I'm afraid I can't help you, my friend, uh, on here. I, I don't go into that aspect. We're pretty much biblically obsessive. Now, if you're talking about what is Revelation 12 about, uh, that's the that is the uh, both a prophecy of the future and also a reference to the past. In the vision there, when Satan is thrown out of heaven, takes a third of the uh, uh, of the angels with him. Uh, the attempt by the demonic forces to stop the messianic birth. You'll see that there and all there. But as far as me interpreting dreams, I don't even want to go near that. That's just not the call here. It would make a whole presentation which, of which I'm very uncomfortable. So we've, we've established this very early. I don't talk about near-death experiences on here, dreams or visions, anything along that line. We stick with the scriptures uh, very close on just what the scripture says, all right? George, uh, we have... Uh, cousin's son, young teen. Uh, we have someone here. Please remember George, uh, George, the host family this past Sunday. And there was an attempt, a life attempt. 
Um, absolutely. And George, let me know, is this one a believer? Is there a chance for you to go and witness to them? Please let me know that as well. We'll be praying because we should also pray for salvation uh, on there, okay? Uh, Con, it is good to see you once again. As I said, uh, your last name's namesake up in the Steelers is actually making news again. That's a brilliant guy there too. So uh, I remember you very clearly because Omar Khan up in the Steelers organization is just a, a, a wonder guy. He's just doing an amazing thing. You come on back if you have some questions, let me know. Good to see you once again. Pamela. Pamela says, I don't fear death, but I think fear leaving my family in the process of getting to heaven. I guess the unknown is this normal. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just the same way. The first time I went to Israel, for example, I mean, I don't know what's it like going through uh, the different, the border, you know, what's it like? What what are the the ways that I act and what things do I do and I not do when I'm there? And there's a, a trepidation. And it was one of the few times I've done international travel. But once I got in, there. Wow, boy, what a change. But you know, when we step into something unknown, it's a very natural thing. You know, when we have that, just as, you know, uh, when we moved here into the area and got to know this beautiful community, we first moved in. Is there things that we should know? The first storm systems that came in. Is this normal? I mean, this area that I'm in is very well known for its wind storms. Well, that caught us by surprise. There's just things, the unknown. This is very normal in our human condition. All right. And it's just that it's what Paul says, you know, right now it's like looking through a glass darkly, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's like we're looking here in a shade that we're, we're just getting a fuzzy uh, a vision here, all right, looking into a bad reflection, but then face to face. And so when I see these things on what is it going to be like the first, you know, earthly minute in heaven, or may I say the first heavenly minute in heaven, I don't know. People will ask me, well, you know, will Jesus be the first one? Will I run? I don't know. I mean, this might be so, but I just don't know. The scripture is not clear on that. And I want to be as biblically honest with you as possible. You know, it, people will go into conjectures. I remember growing up and hearing pastors wax eloquent as, you know, you know, myriads of angels will greet you at the gates. This is all very poetic, but it's just not biblically sound as far as I can say this for sure. So the unknown, yeah, that's very, very normal. Con, you are more than uh, welcome to ask some questions here. Okay, Jilly, I've wondered why people will say God's name in Hebrew, Yahweh, but won't use the English name for witches as Jehovah. Jilly, I don't know either. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Teresa, thank you for the prayers. Okay. Uh, Nanas, what was the bride made ready? It means that it says in Hebrews chapter 11, if you want to write this down here, I scratched this down. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verses 8 through 10, as these ones, the, the faithful of the Old Testament, are looking to the new heaven and new earth. And talks about the new Jerusalem, quote, whose builder and maker is God. It's preparing it. Okay, getting it ready since the foundation of the world. Jesus also says this. I'm going to do some finishing work on it. John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. Uh, my father's uh, home, there are many dwelling places. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Okay, that's the bride being made ready. All right. In what ways is the celestial construction being done? We're not given. You know, we don't understand. Is there special blessings through this? What is the supernatural that's being attached to this? And why is it taking this amount of time within the heavenly realm? We're not open to that. It might be our minds can't conceive that right now, but it does tell us it's being made ready for us. And an expression even in a secular place. When I'm coming home from college and my mom and my siblings are all getting the place ready for when I step in the door at, uh, after uh, the, uh, the Christmas break, during the Christmas break, come home. And there's my favorite foods, and I'm smelling something delicious in the oven, and then the whole house has been decorated, and they keep part of the Christmas tree for me to help because they always want to know that I join them in making it in the Christmas tree and everything. They made it ready. I mean, the love was expressed by they made the house ready for when I stepped up the steps of the front, you know, to go in after traveling 12 hours to get back to Delaware. Okay, it's just, you know, no. and if you came to my house and you walked in and you go, well, you know, we didn't get anything ready, you know, wouldn't you find that this bothersome? 
But oh, you know, the many times when things are prepared. Well, just think about this. You know, the Gibson family, we came up there and we pretty much had a change of plans and only a, a, a very little chance to be able to have them get ready. They had everything ready whenever I showed up. Everything was all prepared and we laid out on the tables on the front yard. And they were saying, they were showing, they cared about those that were coming and also about myself. Very, very kind. That's what it's saying. I hope Nance, that helps you out a little bit. All right. Okay. So, moderators, I want you to be very careful. I have somebody here that's deciding they want to start teaching on here. So let me correct this, but let's all, moderators, let's be very careful. Miss Jilly, this is an area where we're having a Q&A. If you want to become an instructor, you are more than welcome to have your own channel. But I just want to gently remind you that this is not a place where we're going to start having arguments on here. And so you are, uh, Miss Jilly, uh, wrong uh, scripturally. Uh, you will take a look at, you are misquoting Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5. So let me give Miss Jilly an instruction here that I want everybody to write down here because this is a very naive approach to this. This is a wide, and I do have a very clear idea of Miss Jilly's faith. And so I want to say this first of all, Miss Jilly, you are holding on to a new world translation, which is an absolute piece of garbage. It's not a Bible. It is a mistranslation, I can show you, having taught Greek for over 15 years, where it's a horrible mistranslation. It is what's called eisegesis, where you are wanting, your group is wanting to put their doctrines into the Bible, which is reprehensible and a direct violation, as it says in Revelation 22. If you add things, you are going to have the plagues added to you. So you're walking on dangerous ground, my friend. Now, to make the bombastic statement that the Bible says you know nothing on there when you die is an embarrassing misquote of Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5. The entire book of Ecclesiastes, which I would hope that you would learn, would be Ecclesiastes is, quote, if there is no God, everything is vanity. Solomon himself says it doesn't matter if it's fame, it's fortune, it's sex, it is a co comedy. If God is not here, everything is just empty. There is nothing there. Go to chapter nine, of which you are uh, pulling something out of context, and it will tell you. I tell people this, and I hope that you, f that you would take this in the spirit I'm giving it. it. With no insult intended, even a middle schooler could read Ecclesiastes chapter nine and tell me it has nothing to do with a believer dying and being in suspended animation. It is embarrassing when people will use this misquote. It shows a lack of Bible reading, and I'm glad I can instruct you and all my other friends here that this is something in which I'll go militant on. I am tired of people coming in here and taking the scripture and following somebody that would instruct them with no individual responsibility. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 tells you if there is no God, what is what we do? What is the end result of a godless existence. Well, it's grabbing on to the present. The spirit of life, the only thing you have is your existence at the moment. Verse three, even a living dog, which were considered despicable by them, is better than a dead lion, which are considered magnificent. Why? Because the dog's alive, all right? The spirit, if there is no God, the, the, the temporary existence is the only thing worth anything. Verse five, do you know why? If there is no God, the dead know nothing. Now, Miss Jilly, Miss Jilly, tell me in that context, where would you get the idea this has anything to do with a believer dying and going into suspended animation? Absolutely nothing. So I'm going to encourage you, my friend, and I do say this in a kind spirit. You need to learn to read the Bible. Ecclesiastes 9.5 is in reference, if there is no God. It's exactly the opposite of what you're claiming. So let's be careful. The Bible talks about the danger of those who want to be teachers who do not have knowledge. Be very, very careful on that. And I'm glad I'm able to describe that so everybody else knows that this is something that we're not even going to have any discussion about. That's an embarrassing assertion by that faith. I love when they come to my house for correction. All right, um, PM, as long as you have something in Hebrews, if, if it's along the line of heaven uh, or the end times, I would be glad to uh, uh, talk with you about that. Um, okay, uh, Daisy, let's work backwards here. 
the millennial reign, there will be marriage. Yes, the millennial reign, there will, because it talks about it in Isaiah 65 and verse 20, uh, little ones who go on into their life and will die, even as, lit, as young, not little ones, I mean, the ones who die at 100, it's considered like, that's, I mean, that was like an infant's age. So there'll be longevity, there will be succeeding generations, yes. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter, I'm sorry, not Ecclesiastes, Ezekiel chapter 40 through 47 will also be a good place to look at the principles of the millennial kingdom. There are references also in Isaiah 65, but yes, there will be. In heaven, no, Matthew chapter 22, Jesus himself says in marriage, uh, there is no marriage or giving in marriage in the eternal kingdom. Okay. Uh, one, is it wrong for Christ followers to defend themselves or others from physical attacks? You have a good question, one. Well, let's put it this way. If I'm down here in a public setting and somebody goes after my daughter or my wife, we're, we're going we're, we're gonna to have an engagement, okay? I would do what I could to protect them. And this has happened. This has actually has happened uh, in my life where there have been those that would try to attack an innocent one and I've to, had, had to do that. I'm not going to go into it. It's, it's unnecessary. But I would say from personal experience, I've actually had to do that. Uh, on there. You're saying physical attacks, and I don't know whether you're saying based on the faith or things like that, because uh, I have had the innocent ones of the family and things like that, and it was just a physical attack by somebody, and I've done uh, steps to pr protect them, okay? Now, uh, when we are talking about turning the other cheek, if we're talking about in there uh, of, of a physical attack, you do what's necessary to protect yourself on that, and then there is that, you know, do you willingly go for the faith as a martyr, and some would say you do, in turning the other cheek, you would do nothing to defend yourself. And I respect that. Now, others would say, well, I'll do what I can. I mean, in other words, Paul was being uh, taken. They lowered him outside of the city in a basket to protect him. Another one comes out. Oh, my goodness. They're getting near. Here's the other one. This one is, this is Queen of Sheba. They're jumping on each other. Okay, over there. Now they're both over here sitting there. Sorry about that. Uh, but you, you, but but Paul. There have been times when Paul had to hide or escape. Okay, would that be wrong? Well, no. It's it's a principle there that he might be able to minister there. But then, whenever he is taken into incarceration, does he fear death? No, he's ready to go with a boldness there. So, it kind of goes back and forth on that. Uh, blinds. Uh, how much are the T-shirts? I have absolutely no idea. That's not. I don't have any idea what the uh, the mugs are or the t-shirts because, I just put it this way, if you would understand this, that's not what I want to uh, be caught up in. These wonderful people make it possible, for example, the Sassy Francis they say, what I'll do, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, we're gonna take care of the, the, uh, the, the billing, and we're gonna take care of the payments and the sending and everything. Brad, keep doing what you're doing. So I'm going to say this, I know that these people are very, very kind, and wonderful, all of these people, but I keep myself as far away from money as possible. It just is something. It's it's the same thing with the car fund, acornglobal.org. That's the place where you can give. They're a 501c3. They handle the car fund, so I'm not seeing money coming in. Uh, and and I just don't like handling money. It just uh, I just don't want that. So I, I'm, I'm going to freely tell you, my friend, I don't have any idea. I really don't. They gave me a bunch of these t-shirts to give away as gifts, so when I travel, I'll give some away as gifts and things like that, but I really don't know, okay? All right. Jay, could you tell me a really good inspirational Bible verse? I'm feeling a bit demotivated. Oh, certainly. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Or Psalm 37, 4. Trust in the Lord and do good, you know. Just, it's just telling you, that's one that I hold to very much. There are times when I just, doing good just means to function. Just keep moving forward, trusting in the Lord. Um, Psalm 119, verses nine through 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I find that most comforting, Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11. 
And then really, you know, when we talk about the, the, the joy of the Lord. As a matter of fact, if you're looking uh, for more than a verse, I'll tell you something that's very, very uh, uh, powerful. And that would be uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Look at the love explanations through there on Christ's love for us and the heavenly love we can look forward to. Love does not keep account of things done wrong. Love never fails. Love is not em does not embarrass people. It's, it, it, tell me if those might help you, okay? Um, let's see. Okay, Ruby, you're asking my thoughts, and my thoughts are irrelevant, okay, uh, on here. And you're, you're, you're talking about, I don't go into opinions here, and so let's reword this. What does the Bible say a, power, uh, a pastor who allows coffee drinking during morning mass? Uh, that's, uh, I, I don't find a doctrinal uh, thing with it, good or bad. I just, the respect of the worship time uh, is, is utmost, and so I would leave you to look in the scriptures on that. Gay couples and lusting, I would say this. Ruby, I think what you need to do is go into the scripture and see that rather than some 64-year-old guy with a baseball hat's opinion, okay? because ain't nobody gonna base their authority off of my opinion. It's not gonna happen. What does the Bible say? Ruby, 1 Corinthians chapter six, Revelation chapter 22 will answer your question. Go to those passages and you'll see it very, very clearly. 1 Corinthians chapter six and, and Revelation chapter 22, and there you go, and my opinion is totally left out of it. It's what God says. Okay, Christopher, I want to know if we can still see angels. You have a very interesting uh, uh, question there. And Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2 says, it very well could be so. It tells you in Hebrews 13 and verse 2, be sure to be hospitable, welcome people, and help the believers because some of you have entertained angels and not been aware of it. So obviously within the writing in the book of Hebrews, there have been believers such as Abraham did back in Genesis account that have had those coming in from the angelic realm into their house and have taken them and been totally unaware of it. I mean, think about, you know, on the, 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 the road um, uh, right after the resurrection, uh, the road to Emmaus, the believers were walking and didn't even realize they were talking and even arguing with Jesus till they got to the table. So yes, if, if I follow the scriptures, Hebrews 13, it very well could be so. Okay, and Jay, you got my passage there, okay? You, don't, you all don't need to repeat your questions. I'll get to them here. We're doing good, okay? Um... Blinds, when it comes to listening to different pastors, how do I know when I'm listening to? I don't understand when you're using the term of time. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to need you to repeat the question there uh, so I don't go down a wrong path. Okay. Okay. Pamela, you may have heard, and if you did, and if you'll go back, uh, there was a person by the name of Jilly coming on here making an, uh, an assumption, which I corrected. So this is archived. If you'll go back and I'll talk about that as far as the, the great error of using, of which she did not quote, uh, of using Ecclesiastes 9.5 as a proof text that we will be in suspended animation. Uh, the scripture tells you Paul, who has already had a vision of heaven in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, tells us this is the confidence of the believer, 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8, that when the believer is absent from this body, he or she will be present with the Lord. There's nothing there about a waiting period, 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8. Jesus talks about the faithful one, the follower of Yahweh dying and angels bearing him up, Luke 16. Start about verse 22 going immediately to heaven, going immediately to heaven. As a matter of fact, the condemned one, when he dies, when he opens up his eyes in his next conscious realm, he is immediately in hell, okay? Hebrews 9, 27, man is appointed once to die and after this, the judgment. We keep seeing the immediacy of things moving on into the afterlife as well. Philippians 1, 21, Paul says, for to me to live is Christ on earth, live is Christ, but to die, well, that's gain, why? Verse 23, because when I leave this body, I will be with Jesus, which is far better. Those are some starts to help you out with that. Um, 
Millet, is it true that if I am born again believer, my family's coming to heaven because of me, even if they're not born again? No, that's not true at all. Everyone is accountable for their own destination uh, there. I don't know who, who had taught you that, uh, but no, that, that's not true at all. Every individual is culpable. And, and see, whoever believes, think about it. Do we, we see Revelation 3 and verse 20. I stand at the heart's door, okay? I stand at the life's door of everybody and I knock, says the Lord. If anyone will open up the door, I will come in to that person and I will now live with them. Sup with them, be with them, individual, okay? You keep seeing John 3, 16. Whosoever believes in him will not perish and have everlasting life. It doesn't go by nation or neighborhood, okay? It goes by the individual. Um, yes, uh, Rojas, uh, the prayer for the bishop that was attacked. Yes, we wanna keep him in prayer and I'm understanding that he's doing better. Uh, I thank you so much for your concern and we all wanna remember for somebody, it's just, it, it, it's very scary when we hear in places of worship, meant for places of peace, have violence in them and that's, uh, we wanna be in prayer for this one. Okay. Let, let me know, uh, uh, George, on the, uh, the spiritual condition as well as the physical condition of this one. I wanna pray. Uh, Cowboys, how do you know your loved one's going to heaven? You, you ask them directly. I do. One of the young men came to me years back. He was a calling career, and he said that he visited my church back in Tennessee. And he goes, that man kept asking me, are you a believer in Christ? Do you know you're going to heaven? He kept asking me, and I said, yes. He goes, are you sure? He goes, that really, I said, why would you be upset? It's like saying, you know, do you live in Tennessee? Yes, I do. You know, you, you do live there. Why do you ask me again? You know, I, everything. Yeah, I love Tennessee. I want to tell you all about it. Why, do you live in South Carolina? Oh, yeah, I certainly do. I want to know. And some people are bothered when somebody asks them about their salvation. And I, I don't find any problem with that. Ask them. Cowboy, ask them directly. Do you know if you're going to heaven? By the Bible way. And I always say, by what means do you think that this is possible? In other words, why do you think you're going to have it? You're gonna get some interesting answers. Well, I attended church. Well, I've been a good person. Well, you know, I think God's an okay guy. You know, you're gonna, then you can really go into it and talk with them. Teresa, have a blessed day. Take care of yourself. How do I believe in God? Jacqueline, a number of things. Like Romans chapter one, his divine nature and his invisible attributes have been very clear to me. The fact that this is an ordered universe to start off with. I was a skeptic, right? But I looked at it and I said, you know, all of the reasons by the fellow skeptics around me don't hold water. This is a chaotic universe. Then how do we know, you know, how, how do we keep seeing the sun coming up and going down? How do even the indigenous tribes of the, the back, the outback in Australia still know that there's going to be seasons and the, the rivers are going to overflow on a regular basis to water the fields or the animals are moving in and out by seasons and things like this. And the patterns in which we can judge the stars through century, millennia, all right? Well, that was the first thing, okay? And it says it in Romans chapter one, through his divine nature and his invisible attributes. No one has an excuse. Well, that became real to me. And the second thing is the Holy Word had prophecies that were predicted. We know the ages of the manuscripts that were predicted 500 years and uh, fulfilled uh, 500 years later. Micah 5.2, the Messiah is going to be born in this cow town called Bethlehem of about 90 people 500 years later. Matthew chapter one, chapter two, Luke chapter two, chapter three. It happens, okay? Zechariah 11.12, that hundreds of years before the prediction, when the betrayal happens, it'll be for 30 pieces of silver. Luke 23 is exactly what happens. Uh, the, this one that will be born, Isaiah 9, 6, will be a child, will end up being the Prince of Peace. It happens, it's, it's, it's predicted, it comes to fulfillment. Uh, and as I've talked about many times, the crucifixion is predicted in amazing detail in Psalm 22, and the crucifixion wouldn't even be invented for 800 more years. It's things like that which, I will also agree with the title by Lee Strobel uh, on, oh, I'm sorry, by uh, Josh McDowell, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. All of this ev evidence in his best-selling book. Too many things, there had to be a verdict. And I said, look, look there, there's, there's too many supernatural occurrences for me to say these are all happenstance. So Jacqueline, you have a very good question. I hope this helps you start. Okay, let me see. 
Jilly, this is a very, very vague thing and it's, in, I would ask you to be more responsible on the things. I see now as you are grasping that you really do need a good study. I'm going to beg you to leave that faith group because you are not getting anywhere. You're being handed a lot of irresponsible studies. Quote the Dead Sea Scrolls. Let, let me also say this. There are also, Jilly, in there, there are also lists of warehouse goods in the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's also a treasure map, the Copper Scroll, the Dead Sea Scrolls and everything. So what validity are you using for that? The Christians can say we see the ages of that. But if you're using this term like saying it's in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the same way you use this phrase, the dead know nothing and gave no source. It's like saying, Brad, where do you live? Well, Western Hemisphere. Okay, uh, you know, man, you really want to get more specific if you're going to be a responsibly uh, reasoned person, okay? Um, cowboys, I would talk with your relatives on those who knew her faith, knew her background. I would talk with those around her, okay? Uh, Cynthia, what does it mean that those in the dead will rise? Oh, that's a wonderful passage, First Thessalonians chapter 4, the bodies of those that have uh, died. My mom died, her body is still uh, buried up in the Chesapeake Bay area, but her soul's in heaven. Uh, we see Luke 15 and Hebrews chapter 12 that the, the spirits of those are in heaven right now enjoying the comfort of the Lord. And as I gave you the other passages there, the rising is of the physical body, which you see in description, will join with the soul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to have an incorruptible nature in immortal existence. Dan, thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate that. Okay, Southern. I love you, brother. Let's give her a second chance, but this was a great learning moment for me. I didn't know that. She wouldn't have said it. You wouldn't have spoken truth. Now we know. Oh, yeah, I always, a second chance. That's, that's the very thing. It's what I tell them when they come to my house. I said, come on back, or we're willing to talk, you know, when I was in Tennessee. And then I, I sat the, the, the young people down and they made these bombastic statements and I showed them from the Greek. I literally got the computer and showed them on the Greek. Here is where this is a, a corruption of there. And then the one man says, well, we really got to go. And I said, you're more than welcome to come back. And for three years until we moved from Tennessee and never saw them again. I said, but the door's open. You're more than welcome. We'll continue this conversation. And that's the same thing. Where does it say in the Bible, does it say we go to heaven when we die? Cynthia, this is only for the believers. You do know that. Only the believers in Christ, okay? And if you will go back in here, I went through 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8, uh, Luke chapter 20, uh, verse 22 uh, and following of Luke chapter 16. If you go back, I went into a, a pretty detailed uh, description of all of these places too. And then uh, when I will see, I will awake in righteousness. We see the passages that will tell you that. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 6 through 8, Luke chapter 16, start about verse 22, Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. Okay. Um, oh, I see there's an attack. Oh, bless you, uh, Lisa. Thank you for your work here. Really, this is really a very, very uh, a kind of you to help protect us so that we can keep the classroom, so to speak, clear. Two more minutes. Southern, thank you so much for the encouragement. We just want to go by the scripture. Okay. Red Dog, does it say in the Bible why the devil rebelled against God? Yes, your assignment is to read Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, and you will see it very clear. Pride, pride, Isaiah 14 uh, in there. You said, and I'm going to paraphrase it, you said, I can have that throne. That throne's mine. I want that throne. Yeah, it's pride. It's pride. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. Okay, and Cynthia, I had asked, uh, answered that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, you take care, Morgan? Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, the cats are here. They're getting ready. They're, they're comfortable. They're sitting down waiting for me. Okay. Frank, when did Mystery Babylon fall? Take a look in Revelation chapter 17 and Revelation chapter 18. It will give you the description of them. The spiritual Babylon and the financial Babylon. Okay. Uh, let me see.
Um, okay. Kid, as a new Christian, I still feel lost in life. What do I do? Uh, I want to ask you, first of all, tell me the name of your church. Tell me the name of your Bible-believing church and the grouping that you're with. Are they encouraging you? Uh, where are you with? You feel lost? A number of people say, I feel lost, and then they'll say, well, I don't attend an assembly. And I'm saying, well, there's the first answer for you. So tell me that, first of all. And you can even write me as well, brad at theheaventour.com. And we can talk, and let's see if we can help you. One more question here. Do you think God and his angels and all his glory will come out of the sky and reveal the truth for believers and non-believers? Um, you're saying, uh, well, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7, he will come with the clouds and then all, every eye will see him uh, while coming out in the end times. Yes, uh, and the truth will be revealed there. Yeah, behold, he comes in the clouds. Uh, that Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, very, very, very clear uh, there. Uh, on there in the revelation of that. And I've got to run. I'm getting a whole bunch of texts starting to cascade down the top of the phone. So I've got to move on here. Friends, thank you so much. And if you didn't get your uh, questions answered, then write me at brad at theheaventour.com. I'll do the best I can to answer those for you. Thank you so much for your patience and the, the, the help of the moderators. Thank you for that. People, when we have a number of questions, people wanting to know things. And so, Tomorrow, we will be back on with Revelation 21 and verse 3. And if you want to join me on TikTok, that's at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Here on YouTube, I'll be here at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, as the Lord will allow. And we'll have a full hour here, okay? God bless you. I appreciate you so very much. This is Brad with the Heaven Tour. We've been talking about Revelation, and we continue to talk about heaven on here. I hope that our Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5 correction would help a number of people that are very confused by this and uh, with other teaching. Thank you so much. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll talk.